in a manner that you get oriented to what are the different forms of e-content development and most importantly, the ICT initiatives also. What are the ICT initiatives towards which NCRT uh, is working and states also need to work towards these ICT initiatives. So uh, we will be having a session on ICT initiatives, then different forms of e-content will also be a highlight of uh, this workshop so that you get to know what are different forms and formats of e-contents. Uh, then we will be uh, orienting you to different uh, tools and software, free and open source uh, tools and softwares, uh, using which you can uh, edit or uh, and uh, develop uh, different forms of e-content. And it is not um, necessary that uh, all the forms of e-contents you develop on your own. For that, you also need infrastructure. Like, uh, uh, if uh, you develop a high quality, um, audio and video program, you need to have uh, an infrastructure for that. But the role of teacher in that is to uh, develop a um, educationally oriented, pedagogically oriented uh, script and storyboarding. So we will also be um, orienting you to um, script and storyboard development so that if you outsource the uh, content development, you provide them sound scripts and storyboards so that the developers can develop the e-contents accordingly. So both the possibilities are there. Uh, you can develop e-contents, uh, some forms of e-contents on your own. And if you outsource development of e-content, you should know how to develop content briefs, how to develop uh, a sound script, how to develop a storyboard so that uh, you also take care of uh, that outsourcing process and uh, the agency you are outsourcing the e-content for development, you can keep a check on them uh, so that you develop quality um, e-content using your scripts and uh, storyboards. So uh, that is the purpose. Apart from that, uh, uh, you will also be oriented to assistive technologies and uh, evaluation of e-content. If you uh, procure e-content, so that need to be evaluated also. So uh, what uh, are the parameters of e-content evaluation? So we will be having a session on e-content evaluation. Then uh, OER and licensing will be another highlight of uh, this program. Uh, because whenever you are developing content, you uh, uh, curate some images, some uh, video clippings, audio clippings uh, from the different sources. So you also need to know uh, the uh, licensing policies and uh, OER provisions so that uh, uh, you uh, become an informed uh, teacher, informed uh, developer, and informed users of resources uh, which are out there. So all uh, uh, th these are some of the highlights. And uh, uh, while uh, rolling out uh, this um, uh, five days workshop, you will come to know uh, a lot more about how we have uh, uh, planned uh, this uh, workshop and uh, it is not it will not be just a one way process where you will be just listening listening and listening we have planned a lot of hands on experiences for you and demonstrations uh, for you everything will be supported by uh, examples so that for uh, the better understanding Apart from uh, the uh, background and uh, the uh, course of workshop, I would also like to mention here uh, some of the do's and don'ts. So uh, uh, one uh, of the important aspect is that you will be given uh, uh, several assignments. So it is important to submit your assignments uh, for uh, getting your certificates. So certificates will be issued to those 
uh, who will be having full attendance in all these sessions and who will also be submitting their uh, assignments. If you have any uh, problems, any queries, any tricky questions, any grievances, uh, don't bother uh, Dr. Monica or uh, Ms. Nidhi uh, with those uh, aspects. Please feel free to call me. I will be there whenever I will be free. I will be there to address all your uh, queries and questions or, or grievances if you have. So I was checking in the group, some of you were showing your inability because of some reasons to attend this workshop. So you have been deputed by your authorities. So you have to take such questions on that. We all are well-educated people uh, attending a national level workshop. So we must know how to go about for some specific problems and where not to raise all those issues which are not uh, in our hand. So, uh, but still we are there to uh, address your grievances. Free, uh, please feel free to um, uh, ask Monica to call me if you have any such uh, doubts or uh, queries. And also I would like uh, to uh, mention here that uh, you, you all are also carrying out uh, online uh, teaching as a teacher and as an educator also, because uh, many of you are, uh, you are playing roles of educators also. So it is very hard to maintain discipline and sustain interest in online teaching. So you also might be facing all these uh, challenges. Although we have planned uh, this workshop in a manner that we keep your interest sustained but on the contrary, on the other hand, we also expect uh, from you to maintain discipline so that we uh, complete this workshop with, with least uh, challenges. So uh, for subject specific tool, we have also planned a breakout room so that uh, teachers can be grouped uh, as per their interest and uh, get orientation to various subject specific tools. So uh, these were some of the highlights and some of the expectations that I have uh, from you all. Uh, so with these words, uh, I once again welcome you all uh, to this workshop and uh, stop my uh, deliberation. But I will be there today. Uh, also, I am having two sessions with you. And um, whenever you require my presence, uh, I will be there. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for taking us through the course, uh, uh, the background of the course, as well as the, uh, since it is an online session, it is very difficult for teachers also to sit for long hours and motivating us to uh, conduct this uh, in the, with the least challenges, with the support of each other. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, now, uh, for the next, uh, I invite uh, Honorable Joint Director, Professor Amrindra Behra, for the opening remarks for this program and guiding us further for the program. Over to you, sir. Just give me two minutes, Dr. Monica. Yeah. Okay, sir. So by the time sir joins, I am again requesting all of you who have not renamed yourself, please rename because I can see many names with which I am not able to locate the state name. So please use the state code as given in the WhatsApp group with your name before your name and then underscore and then your name. Also registration form has been shared with you all. Please fill the registration form and if you face any difficulty, you can write to us either in the chat box or on the WhatsApp group. Uh, Ma'am, if you are saying something, you're mute. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So if you want us to be uh, bilingual, please uh, tell us because uh, just now I have checked in the chat, people are writing in Hindi, they are typing in Hindi. So, <laughs> Uh, that is why I asked this question. If you want us to be bilingual, we will be bilingual. Uh, or if you want us to speak in English, because uh, this uh, 
in this phase, uh, most of the uh, southern states are there. Some uh, people might have difficulty in understanding uh, Hindi. So we have organized uh, groups uh, in the manner that uh, we can address the language uh, barrier also. In the last phase, all Hindi speaking states were there. So we kept our deliberation mostly um, primarily in uh, Hindi. So wherever there is a requirement of having, um, of being bilingual, we uh, are uh, okay for that also. So please uh, tell us. Thank you. Madam, English is better, madam. Or you can speak in Southern language, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam. Okay, so I think we will be very simple whenever we will be uh, giving our uh, uh, presentations in English also, so that who uh, are not very comfortable with English, they also understand. So we will be very simple. Thank you. Uh, we will be using very simple English. We cannot understand Hindi. Okay. okay. Right. Very, can I go ahead? Yeah. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Sir. Okay. Very, yes, sir. very good morning and namaskar to uh, all of you. Wanna come morning, to the sir. friends? Wanna come to the friends from Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, and uh, uh, other uh, areas, including Andaman Nicobar Islands. Also, there are some Tamil-speaking people. So, um, wanna come to all of you. Uh, esteem, my esteemed colleagues from CIET, uh, Dr. Bharti, Head Department of ICT and Training, uh, CIET, Professor, um, esteemed Professor Indukumar, uh, Program Coordinator of this five days uh, training program on e-content development, Dr. Monica, uh, Co-Coordinator of this five days program and other colleagues faculty and resource persons from CIET and other institutes and distinguished colleagues from uh, across all the southern states, including Lakshadweep Islands and Andaman Nicobar uh, Islands, uh, who are participating in uh, this particular five days training program on e-content development. First of all, uh, on my personal behalf and on behalf of CIET and CRT, I welcome all of you uh, to this five days program. And uh, to uh, put the context before all of you, uh, all of us, we know that the national education policy gives a lot of stress on teaching, learning and assessment using and integrating technology, especially digital education. And our country is also linguistically very diverse. We have five distinct language families, starting from Dravidian, Aryan, uh, Austroasiatic, Tibeto-Burman and Andamanese language family, since Andaman Nicobar Islands participants are also here. So um, uh, uh, Andamanese language family is a distinct language family. And uh, there are nearly 1700 languages spoken in our country. So including the languages of your states, uh, particularly the Southern states and the two island uh, participants, those who have joined. So uh, apart from other diversities, uh, geographical, cultural, so linguistic diversity is one where we find a lot of challenge in teaching, learning and assessment because being a teacher, teacher educator, we need to know the child's language and uh, pitch the curricular resources in a way that child understand and uh, have holistic development uh, in a way. So that is why uh, it is very important that uh, uh, use and integration of ICT needs to happen uh, by um, overcoming the language barrier as well. And the policy also mentions that at teacher preparation level, whether it is at pre-service level, uh, where we have diets, colleges of teacher education and SCRTs where we run courses for the different uh, uh, teacher preparation. And uh, also the in-service teachers, uh, because we have nearly 85 lakh in-service teachers in our country. So their continuous professional development is also 
uh, a challenge uh, in uh, since we have to do it in a time bound manner and the policy uh, nep 2020 again endorses that all of us we teachers teacher educators edu leaders uh, brc crc uh, coordinators we need to have 50 hours mandatory training per year by all of us so that that should come from our voluntary voluntarism and uh, voluntarily we need to uh, take up uh, this 50 days orientation and uh, since 85 lakh teachers are there in the country so training 85 lakh teachers in one year is not a simple thing it is itself a challenge so that is why the online platforms and all are the, the key so we need to use that and the policy also talks about the dibang children uh, the children with special needs there are nearly 10 crore uh, children with special needs in our country so um, uh, we can just imagine that their number so they need to also have a comparable quality of education whether they are from kerala they are from tamil nadu they are from puducherry or uh, they are from lakshadweep or any other uh, place um, telangana or andhra pradesh so every child need to have holistic education and have a comparable quality of education for him or her so it is the child's right so that is why the policy talks about uh, that and not only that the policy also talks about uh, continuous orientation professional development of uh, edu administrators and also having e governance e management uh, as far as the management and administration is concerned and now uh, in the context of uh, uh, newer technologies the policy endorses the development in disruptive technologies which disrupts our life in one way or the other so maybe for the older citizens it could be disruption for youths it could be new uh, for them to learn more or for children it could be new for them to learn more uh, but there are augmented reality content virtual reality content virtual labs also and many of you being teachers from different states have been using also but we need to orient all of us so that all of us invariably use it together uh, being the stakeholders and another thing is that uh, um, every teacher not only be a consumer of uh, digital contents but uh, uh, need to be prosumer also both the producer of uh, e content and user of e content so that will help us that there will be no dearth of e content uh, similarly if we say if any vegetable or fruit we will not be cultivating and we will just be eating so from where it will come so it, it will not be available so it, it is also true in case of digital content so if we teachers and teacher educators we produce digital content we get more digital content so uh, the policy endorses that and also the policy takes care of the di disruptive technologies in the sense and the newer technologies uh, like artificial intelligence robotics iot uh, even talking from 3d to 7d so how uh, digital contents could be uh, developed and also talking about training retraining of our teachers and in a way uh, in the process they learn unlearn and relearn the newer technologies so that is why uh, it is very pertinent that all of us need to be oriented on those lines and recently you might have heard uh, uh, or you might have seen on television or newspapers also the government of india had a budget announcement on fifth, uh, on first of february so there are four five announcements related to digital education in school education so uh, the government uh, though we started 12 tv channels in ncert in the year 2020 september uh, one class one channel uh, but the government this year as part of the budget announcement has uh, gone ahead to expand this to 200 channels so that uh, kerala not only the victor channel will be one channel but simultaneously can run 12 channels for each class uh, for class 1 one, one channel for class 12 also one channel similarly tamil nadu also and uh, andhra pradesh telangana and uh, karnataka other states also including the union territories depending on their uh, needs so they can take care of and identify channels 
and develop content and share those contents through tv channels because all of us we know that all our children who are coming to government set up schools so uh, they don't have smartphones with their parents even many there are many suicide cases also the children unable to get smartphone to continue their teaching learning so they also commit suicide even there are cyber safety and security related issues children commit suicide uh, due to one way or the other they play games and get trapped with that and pay all the money of their from their parents accounts and then they take extreme steps so we being teachers and teacher educators need to be sensitized in those lines that therefore the cit and crt at the national level and the, our uh, faculty members they have taken up this initiative and three more announcements the government of india has done as part of digital education not only one class one tv channel and expanding 12 tv channels to 200 tv channels so that each state get tv channels to telecast their regional language content or state language content for their stakeholders so that 24 by 7 children can be supported in the covid pandemic situation uh, not that if they don't have smartphones they will be deprived from Uh, quality content and digital education and the second thing is uh, that the uh, uh, government is well aware that due to covid pandemic situation schools are closed lab activities are not being done so this year the government has announced a budget for 850 to 1000 uh, virtual labs uh, for the for the uh, country and uh, uh, ncrt will be developing that this year uh, in collaboration with the states and other stakeholders so that all of us if we don't have uh, a chance to dissect a frog in our classroom in biology classroom at least we can have a virtual dissection um, by the time we get a real motor vehicle to drive so we can have a virtual uh, driving through simulator and similarly uh, the hazardous chemicals Uh, could be handled by children through virtual labs and they know which uh, chemical reacts what way so uh, that will be uh, there and uh, uh, also that will help us maybe there is a live volcano in andaman nicobar islands many of you uh, may not get a chance to see that live volcano which is called as a mud volcano in andaman nicobar islands but definitely if they have a virtual Uh, uh recording of that virtual tour of the uh, mud volcano in andaman nicobar islands so uh, definitely uh, you can see that so similarly there are many thing uh, we um, might be knowing or uh, not knowing um, and uh, similarly maybe house boats or backwaters in kerala so the uh, uh, maybe uttarakhand children may not be knowing how a house boat uh, look like and how people stay there and how uh, in backwater uh, and uh, in the surrounding areas people live so uh, because in high hills you cannot have house boats in rivers the next second it will be destroyed due to the current and uh, uh, since uh, the, the rivers are on high hills so uh, that is why they can take a virtual tour for that uh, so like this we can get and the second third thing the ministry has also approved as part of budget announcement that uh, um, we can have digital education digital content competition for the teachers and students across the country so that we get quality content uh, digital content prepared by all they get motivated so that we are also taking up uh, this time and the fourth one is every teacher need to be trained Uh, to develop uh, digital content and use those so uh, there are also discussion about having digital universities but that is in higher education but in school education these are some of the things uh, it is being planned so uh, i will not take much time i have a short presentation i'll take you through uh, because before 11 i have to bind up uh, i have uh, another meeting uh, for the institutional advisory board meeting Uh, where we will be planning for the uh, annual uh, academic calendar annual budget for cit uh, will be planned so i'll take you through the presentation uh, dr monica can i go ahead uh, yes sir please go ahead sir okay anybody um, permitting me to uh, take my presentation
So you are able to share the screen, right? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Is it full screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was uh, um, given the task to tell about the di different digital education initiatives uh, uh, at the national level also. So this is the presentation which I will be taking you through uh, in next 10-15 minutes uh, time. And uh, I must mention that CIT being at the national level, at the apex level since 1984, uh, we have our main mandate for developing digital contents and uh, conducting research and material development and designing training programs also and uh, also doing extension activities for uh, 15 lakh schools for 85 lakh teachers and 26 crore school students. So for that, uh, uh, the policy has already given direction. This slide you can find. I have mostly... Uh, elaborated the policy talks about development of digital content capacity building of teachers using synchronous and asynchronous communication conducting research on ict initiatives and all so uh, the policy uh, talks about uh, this and even the policy also talks about uh, uh, creating awareness on cyber safety and security e waste management media literacy and mental health also the policy talks about development of learning management systems, content management systems, e-governance, e-management, MIS, and monitoring and tracking of educational processes through mobile apps, portals, and all. And the policy does mention about conducting research, pilot studies to impact studies in school education so that uh, children are learning and they are gaining something or not that can be seen. And the policy talks about developing guidelines, a set of guidelines for maintaining standards in the system. And also the policy talks about increasing access, equity and the quality and holistic education, uh, providing holistic education through uh, technology as a supplementary resource uh, as well. If I talk about the digital education initiatives, the institute uh, is uh, using merely uh, 12 TV channels, one channel per class on 24 by 7 basis, more than 230 radio stations using Diksha portal also and ICT curriculum has been designed and uh, the NISTA online training program for elementary, secondary and foundational level has been rolled out and also Indian sign language content and audio books for children with special needs uh, has been developed and uh, using SWAM platform, there are online courses also and uh, augmented reality, virtual reality and virtual labs also we are using and e Sala also we are using to great extent to disseminate digital books. We are using social media in a great scale. And for obtaining feedback from stakeholders, we have a 24 by 7 PME Vidya, IVRS and uh, counseling, guidance counseling, monodarpan uh, uh, helpline, which is called interactive voice response system. We are monitoring online uh, the calls also and uh, having uh, different uh, mailing addresses for different purposes given to the stakeholders to reach out to us. If I talk about the digital initiative, these are the six major digital initiatives I will be talking about. And uh, one is e Sala, where we have digitized all NCRT content and ebooks and uploaded here. We have also uh, uh, Diksha portal now managed by NCERT, uh, so, uh, which has a large collection of 2.5 lakh uh, e contents and uh, 5,000, 6,000 plus e-courses and 5,500 plus e-books, including all your state textbooks, uh, e-contents and all. So because all the states and UTs have onboarded on Diksha and they have their uh, tenant also on Diksha. And uh, as part of Swayam study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds, we have 28 online courses and we have one ICT curriculum for students and teachers which was piloted in Karnataka state and now under implementation in 14 states. 
and uh, uh, pm e vidya uh, one class one tv channel and many other initiatives were also taken and if i take you through this as a part of pm e vidya we have 12 tv channels i mentioned 230 radio stations on pm e vidya uh, tv channels we have more than 6200 videos and more than 3000 audios also and as a part of diksha we are also rolling out the course that is now part of prime minister's e vidya program and as a part of special education content i have already mentioned we are developing indian sign language content and also audio books talking books for visually challenged children and so uh, through diksha portal and app television and radio uh, these are being integrated and uh, uh, placed as a coherent service so uh, and uh, uh, used as a, an integrated and coherent service in the sense the content available on diksha are also available on tv and radio so uh, through qr codes on tv and through 230 radio stations across the country covering the whole country and uh, this is the home page of the uh, diksha portal and uh, there are 5500 plus e books 2 lakh 50 thousand plus e contents in 36 indian languages and 5000 6000 plus online courses uh, plus 5 crore people are using these uh, contents across the country so uh, just give me a minute hello आपने जेडी को डायरेक्ट हेलो सॉरी एंड दिस इज द कोहेरेंस यू कैन सी दैट हाउ द कंटेंट्स अवेलेबल ऑन दीक्षा आर टेलीकास्ट ऑन टीवी एंड ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन रेडियो सो ऑन टीवी चैनल यू कैन फाइंड द क्विक रेस्पॉन्स कोर्स सो इफ देर आर टू सिबलिंग्स एट होम और थ्री सिबलिंग्स एट होम so one child would like to watch in the on tv the uh, its own class content other child would like to watch it on uh, mobile phone or tablet so they can scan the code of that particular class and watch also so that that is why we are having coherent access simultaneously the same content is available on tv radio portal and app and there are many uh, online courses which has been launched for teachers and uh, all so covid responsive behavior is one such and urdu language scripting action research cyber hygiene practices environmental hazards water harvesting also catch the rain so that is there and we have also nistha online training all of us we know because we are part of the nistha training and there there were 42 lakh teachers at elementary level who were covered and uh, um, now we are covering 10 lakh secondary school teachers and 25 lakh at teachers at the foundational level uh, uh, where uh, we are running uh, diksha but in case of the states which are participating in this uh, program kerala has not yet started the nistha uh, training in kerala uh, though uh, in other states uh, it has been started um and uh, this is the target and these are the languages the materials are available uh, so uh, the elementary courses are available in 11 languages and the secondary courses are available in 10 languages and the uh, foundational literacy numeracy courses are available in uh, 11 languages and uh, these are the uh, resources available on e patsala there are about 696 books including 377 ncert textbooks and 6664 audio videos and we have more than 48 lakh app downloads and 15 crore page hits on uh, e patsala website uh, so uh, we have also launched one uh, augmented reality uh, app uh, content uh, so uh, you can see e patsala mobile app has been branded CIT is running 16 websites and 10 mobile apps. So uh, these are the um, uh, some of the mobile apps for different purposes, including National Achievement Survey, self-assessment of teachers, and augmented reality content and Insta app. So this presentation will be with you. We have uh, 28 online courses for classes 11th and 12th run by NCERT, and, uh, and in eight cycles started in December, there are 15,000. people who are taking up these courses 
and we have ICT curriculum for the whole country, uh, which is under revision also in uh, after the NEP 2020 has been rolled out since the curriculum development process is on. So this course we piloted in uh, uh, Karnataka for teacher courses, for student courses we piloted in Delhi and now uh, this course is under implementation in 14 states at different levels of implementation. And uh, we have some more courses also uh, which we take up through webinars and uh, on YouTube official channel and uh, more than 500 plus webinar sessions on ICT tools. More than hundreds of ICT tools have, have been dealt and uh, on learning management system also cyber safety security also we had webinars and uh, cyber safety security guidelines has also been developed for students, teachers, parents and schools in collaboration with UNESCO and also by CIET and CERT and these are uh, disseminated and uh, these are available on CIET website also. We are having a one experimental study with Israel students and our DM school students in RI, Ajmer, Bhopal, Bhubaneswar and Mysore. So uh, children are interacting and having cultural exchange and knowledge sharing with uh, Israeli children to know more about uh, their culture and traditions. And we have also helped Mauritius to uh, uh, develop one mobile app and portal for Mauritius uh, country. Uh, and uh, also we have supported Bhutan for sharing e-contents for uh, the, themselves in English. And uh, uh, also uh, international webinars we organize. So uh, the part of dissemination of ICT. Pragyata guideline for digital education has been developed starting from digital education steps to screen time and ergonomics. So balance between online and offline has been dealt including mental health and well-being. And uh, we have a large number of uh, live telecasts uh, on alternative academic calendar on 12 TTS TV channels, a series of webinars. NCRT is having a talking uh, book and uh, using Google Voice Assistant. Children at primary level can listen to NCRT books by ordering on Google Assistant. Uh, okay, Google, talk to e Sala, read uh, Marigold English uh, Class 5, Chapter 5. So that uh, um, app can read the book for the child. Monodarpan Guidance Counseling Service and PME with the IVRS service is also there for telephone calls uh, on, uh, for every time. And uh, Sahyog for um, mental health and wellness. We have a half an hour video uh, uh, live session with trained counselors, uh, 300 counselors across the country. Live interactive session on Inclusive education also being done by us. There are dozens of online quizzes, constitution quiz, yoga quiz, discover Gandhi quiz, cyber safety quiz, Netaji Suvas, Chandra Bose and the freedom struggle moment quiz. So these are some of the quizzes we run. And uh, uh, to showcase the research work across the country by you, by CIT, NCRT and other faculty from SCRT's diets. We have a biannual journal, uh, which is a digital journal of Indian, uh, Indian Journal of Educational Technology. And every quarter we have a newsletter uh, and uh, uh, three every three months. So we showcase the digital initiatives of us. Thank you very much. These are some of the things I wanted to share with all of you. Uh, so over to Dr. Monica. These are my contact details. Uh, my email ID and uh, uh, mobile number. So anytime you feel you would like to trouble me or ask me a question uh, or clarify your doubts or seek any information related to anything. So 24 by seven, you are welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, for uh, taking us through the uh, all the national initiatives and also giving us a guideline for the upcoming five days. Uh, I thank you uh, on my behalf and on behalf of all the participants. Now I'll invite Ms. Nidhi to propose the formal vote of thanks for the uh, session as well as <laughs> now a session already we have pre-poned. Uh, Ms. Nidhi, over to yeah, you. The, the PPT will be immediately shared with you. Don't worry about that.
Uh, sir, it is already on the website. I'll share the link so that they can also check the PPTs in advance for the upcoming session. Yeah, I'll also WhatsApp in the group. Thank you, sir. Miss Nidhi, please. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of CIAT, I take this opportunity to express my humble gratitude towards our joint director, sir, Professor Aminu Bhera, for enlightening us. Professor Indu Kumar for acquainting us with the program, Head DICT for giving us the opportunity to organize the SRG workshop for development of e-content for Diksha. I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all the students. Uh, can I exit? Rokhi, 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 forgive me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, bye. Nidhi, please continue. Sorry. English themselves in this learning process. Thank you, Nidhi, uh, for uh, proposing a vote of thanks. Uh, now, since Sir has pre-poned his session because of the meeting as he communicated to all of us, now uh, the session, the first session has come to its end. Today we have uh, extra 15 minutes with us. Uh, so now I'll request all of you to, first of all, who have not registered themselves, please register uh, using the Google form which has been shared uh, with uh, all of you through chat, as well as it is also posted on the WhatsApp group uh, so that uh, you can register without any problem. You have might, uh, one of but the participant has mentioned that they are facing some kind of difficulty. So I think it is nothing but the uh, internet connectivity issue. And I have uh, announced uh, previously also that we will keep this form open for two days so that whoever specifically my participants from Lakshadweep and Andaman can register without any uh, problem. So once you are off with a Zoom meeting or something, you, your signals will be better. You can register at that time during the breaks. Uh, we have also shared some rules and regulations for maintaining, uh, to be maintained during the Zoom sessions as well as in the WhatsApp group. So kindly adhere to that. Do not unmute without raising your hand. We will ask you to unmute. And if it is possible, please post it in the chat box because that saves a lot of time. Unmuting, muting, technical time, it, it wastes a lot of time during the session. And also please rename yourself my humble request to you all again and again so that your attendance is not missed by the CIT technical team also. And you are also not in any trouble later on. So we will now break for 15 minutes uh, so that you can get fresh enough. And we will start the next session at 11.15 uh, rather than 11.30 since we have wind up early today. So we will start at 11.15. Now you can take a break. You can close also. You can join the meeting again. Or you can simply put yourself uh, video and uh, audio on mute and uh, go for 15 minutes for the break. Thank you.